In this video, I would like to focus on the canvas background color in Chart.js. And you might say, well, I already understand background colors and canvas is probably very, very uh, basic topic. Well, I want to go a bit more deeper because there are some examples in Chart.js documentation, which can be very, very interesting. Even I have misunderstood or have underestimated that example as well. So let's start and explore here. So we are here right now and I want to go down here in the configuration and then you go here to the uh, canvas background basically here you can see here we have the canvas background here drawing here a nice simple background nothing fancy at all however if you scroll down here we get some better understanding of how this is being set up and this is becoming interesting because here you're going to have a better understanding of a plugin in chart.js all right so what we're going to do here first is first of all i'm going to break it down here let's look at this what we have here is basically three items. As we remember in Chart.js, we will have, oh, I need to make a script tag here. And I realize that we are probably missing some basics, but it's all right, we'll cover it later on. But we have basically three items. Number one, we have here the block, which would be our setup block. Number two, we have our configuration block. And finally, we have our render or initialization block. Initialization block. In here, we will also have what we call the plugin. And we have to see where we have to put the plugin. Most likely, we will be here just above the setup or just uh, below the setup. That's probably the best location to put because most of that is usually connected. And then the config is referencing there. However, we'll have to double check exactly how or where we have to put it in. All right, so we have here this, and you can see here immediately the structure. We have the config, and this is very straightforward here. We know it's a donut, so we just copy this. I'm going to copy this, and this will be in the config. All right, and you can see here, this config has a plugin, and this plugin is basically re referencing to the plugin block here. So we need to have the plugin block before the config or configuration block. So next we have the setup block here. I'm going to grab all of this, paste it in here, put it in there, all right. And then once we have this, I want the final one, which would be here. Well, we have here only the plugin block, so I'm going to grab this. And I will just grab all the text included. And then I will scroll down a bit. My mouse doesn't want to scroll at this moment. I don't know why, but all right. So we have this and then basically we are very close here except that what we need more is the rendering block and i realize that the rendering block is missing here so we could make one immediately so to do this what i do want to do first i want to go to my uh getting started here and we can get here the getting started sub menu we just copy this and then we'll put this up here all right proper indentations next i want to grab the the chart.js uh, library so there we are all right so what i want to do here now is i want to just give this a class so i'll give this class let me say your chart box making sure that this has a fixed height and width so in this case because it's a a pie chart or a circle or donut chart so we can say here for the chart box class the width will be set oh make sure that there's a dot all right here, the width will be set on 400 pixels, so we more than enough. Save this and go back here. All right, so we have here, of course, something doesn't work, of course, why we have the rendering block, we didn't, did, didn't do it yet. So go down here, let's start to do the rendering because we have now the my chart ID. So we say a constant my chart equals, and then here we say new chart. Remember, this is a uh, constructor. And in here, we'll just say my chart, uh, oh sorry, document. You have to get the document, get element by ID. And then we say here, my chart with capital C, comma. Then what we have to do here is to grab the config. So once I do this, I save this, and you can see here, so this would mean that currently here, the default option here uh, let's say here the background canvas here was missing a part here as you can see but now if we do this we should have something there we are all right so we have this now and now we basically have created a plugin 
without even understanding what we really did. A plugin is basically on this part here only. This is the only part of the plugin. In Chart.js, a plugin is considered what we call a uh, basically an object. So you can see here, this is this plugin is an object and has the ID of the custom advanced of oh, sorry custom canvas background color. So basically, this would be the plugin name. And then here, what it does here, it says here, draw or before drawing, before drawing the chart, it wants to do the following. We say here constant CTX, which is equal the chart itself. Remember, you have to use this here chart dot canvas and get context Y because we have here below. Eventually, we had the my chart, so we couldn't put this this constant here up. So that's what we have here. So this is why it draws here. All right. It indicates before drawing the chart itself. So if we have the AIP of uh, the API, sorry, there you have multiple options before drawing, after drawing, uh, before initialization, after initialization. There are many options run. I didn't cover this yet, and but there's a whole uh, whole list of them that you can use. But eventually, what you want to do here is basically draw the design. What are we going to draw before the chart basically has been completed with drawing is we're going to create here a new item which will be here the fill of green light green and we have the rectangular and you can see here the rec fill what is exactly the item that we are filling from top to bottom well this chart dot width references again back here to the width of the chart and the height of the chart you can see this so if we were going to get this we can get this for example here as a console.log and all I want to grab is the chart width and of course here chart height oh sorry that was not what I wanted to do it should be in here and saved it so if I saved it and refresh you can see here now all right it, it keeps on on uh, uh, basically it keeps on uh, repeating itself looping itself this is normal because it keeps on drawing because basically what happens is you can see the multiple times or how many frames they have as it starts to draw and basically every frame it draws but it maintains of course the 400 by 400 you can see here because we have set here right now a 400 width here however because this is a square by default because of it's a pie chart or a donut chart so width and height equals 400 and that's correct because if you go down back here we can see here these things are now 400 so what we are really doing here is these two are being skipped because this will indicate where's the positioning where it starts and we want to start at zero and here as well as zero basically x and y zero and where do we want to end it that's here so this is very very familiar if you remember the x zero if you haven't watched that definitely watch that one we have the y zero and then you have and this was uh, when I covered this topic according to this and x1 and y1 this was re related to the gradient colors so here this was left uh, starting point which would be left zero pixels at the left so it's at the very beginning and then here would be the top with the y remember the top point so the top point that's where we the starting point so basically it says from zero zero all down to 400 by 400 meaning this all together so what we could do is here if we would change this 200 you will see here basically the ending x1 or ending from zero to 200 so if i save this now and let's refresh so uh unexpected identifier of course uh, we have this here. This is not allowed. Sorry. Refresh. And now we have a background color that covers only the half of it. So we want it from zero up to 200 pixels here, but we want the height of 400 pixels, meaning uh, x0, which is equal to zero, to x1, which is equal to 200 pixels, and then y0 was zero till y1, which was 400 pixels, so top to bottom. And we could change this as well, putting here 200 by 200, and then save this and refresh. You can see now we have a tiny square within. And with this, you could even continue on. Let's say, uh, try something else here. We make this 200 by 200. And this will be then, remaining would be 400 by 400. 
And here, if I save that, refresh, now you can see here we get these checkerboard design as well. We could probably specify here something else. We're going to the color. However, here is the CTX and it's built in within the CTX here. We, so that's basically it. And I will be going deeper and deeper into plugins because plugins can be very interesting. It's one of the things that probably many people would like to know, but the documentation lacks quite a lot. And I'm right now uh, dissecting a lot of parts of it and I want to go very deep in this part. So we eventually are going to create a plugin, but in reality, guess what? You already have your plugin here. And if you look at this here, I think this is basically a uh, part that you don't need to remember here. Note, changes to the plugin flow doesn't reflect here. All right, just ignore this because this was just uh, part of in here, any of the changes that we're referring to this. However, this is one of the parts to understand with designs or at least with plugins and the background color of, around it. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.